I'm Jennifer Branch. Today I'd love to show you my garden. There's this beautiful rose, two rosebuds, an overblown kind of faded to white rose. It is just gorgeous. Some of the David Austin ones, so you know that they're beautiful. And when you are done painting this, you are going to remember summer roses forever. Let's paint. I begin with a warm wash in the background. I'm using some quinacridone rust and some azo yellow up at the top. I want it very warm behind all the cool colors I'm going to layer on it. It's a backlit, kind of side lit rose, and so I need that warmth behind the cool colors. Always think about the layers of washes you're doing, not the final color you want it. I'm painting a lot less in the back of the background and the rose at the same time. I'm painting them almost separately um, with just pulling a little bit of the background into the rose as I paint. I The petals are not as transparent as they usually are. Just the lighting and the type of flower. I believe this is a Heritage David Austin and the petals aren't white is transparent so I don't get as much of the background seen through the petals. So I'll pull a little in to blend it but that's about all I need. I'm going to carve out a bit with ultramarine blue. This is going to be a dark heavy background in contrast. Um, the flower on the left, the full open kind of overblown flower is white and the the buds are pink so it's the rose fades to pink as it gets older so it's, it's a pale pink when it's full and then white when it's overblown like this and all the petals will drop by the next day. I'm using my huge mop because I'm going to scrabble around and really get layers and layers to make the background interesting. So don't worry about splatter and using mops are messy. If you splatter a little bit of pigment onto the rose, it does not matter. You're going to be painting shadows in there. It's all going to come out right. Don't worry about keeping it pristine. So that's about the dark I'm going to go for there. And I usually kind of do a discrete test. And sometimes I want more, sometimes I want less. I want some more curve on that stem, but I'm not wanting to show the stems too much. I want them to kind of disappear at the end. There are a few highlights on these um, sepals there, and I want to have them, but I also don't want them to distract from the main rows. So I'm blurring that in. And remember, on a heavily sized paper like Twin Rocker, I can always pull things out. I can't get the pristine paper white, but I can get very close to it. And I can use gouache if I need to. I did not use gouache on this painting because it just was a bit heavy. Um, I This is actually the second version I did. And... It, it didn't look right. It didn't work with this painting. And you're going to find out that sometimes it works and makes the painting better. And sometimes it makes it much worse. So work with your instincts on that. I'm wearing some really heavy darks. So I'm using still warm darks. Uh, I'm using quinacridone rust and ultramarine blue. I'm mixing a lot of colors on this. So I'm giving you the main component, main pigment, but I usually don't mix more than two or three colors at once and I still make sure that they flow together on the paper because you always want them, to, that's the beauty of watercolor. You may want to fool with the colors on your palette, but you want them really to flow together on the paper. Okay, so there's kind of like some bokey type highlights there with the uh, quinacridone rust in behind it so I wanted those the dark on top of the warm lights so I'm very much I'm I'm pulling out around um, 
many more of these little highlights than I'm going to use. I'm not going to use half of them and I'm going to make them a lot smaller, but I want to have them if I need them because I really can't tell until the entire painting is there and I need to know, I don't know how balanced I want to make it. So see a little spot there, don't worry about them. And notice the background from the, I'm using the same colors moving up into the top of the painting as the bottom of the painting, but just the background makes all the difference where you can really see the greens and it looks like light struck greenery and their leaves back there and all sorts of interesting things and the browns, well that's more like the ground and dirt and in the bark I have piled massively around my roses to make them bloom. This is still ultramarine blue mixed with a tiny bit of quinat of Nicolazzo yellow. So always pay attention to what you're painting. Um, if you want to see that photo for longer, I've got it up on my website so you can follow along with the demo that way and get the list of pigment names and the photos, reference photo so you can paint your own roses because I really want you to, my garden is gorgeous this year. I think it was because of the piles and piles of dark, of bark, but, um, okay, so I want pretty heavy darks around there, um, around the roses to make them pop. So I can always blur them later, but I want you to paint in my garden with me because it is just beautiful all the flowers blooming and everything happening at once. So I'm still going around. Remember, the roses are going to be pink. Think ahead. Drop some pinks in. You don't want, even with a very stark background against the roses like this, you don't want them to be completely distinct. You want them to be part of the same painting. So dropping some of the same colors around, that makes it an integrated whole. More shots from my garden. So see all the little bits of quinacridone rust there really make a difference because they're going to work with the deep shadows on the roses. And this painting, surprisingly, is all about the background. If the background's not right, the roses really don't matter, even though the roses are the subject of the painting. You want it dark, you want it flowing together nicely, and it has to be the right balance of cool and warm. And it has to be balanced. Now here I'm doing the kind of glowing hot spots there. Now I get to start in the roses. So see, it, half the painting is the background, and that really is the part that makes the foreground look good, especially with light-colored flowers. I'm using a lot of quinacridone rust in the shadows on these. I, they're pale pink roses, but that helps. I'm flowing in some cobalt violets, so it's it's a combination there. Uh, you want the darks to be, the shadow areas, to still be warm on the pink roses. And here, instead of using a blue, I'm using a cobalt violet with little touches really more than I saw in real life. The flower has faded to very, very faint touches of pink, but I wanted a little bit more for reflections on the petals. So I'm pulling that in around the, with the shape of the petals, and that is very important to always have your brush move with the shape of the petals because I don't get too many goes on this, right? Three or so is the most that I can get. I'm pulling that in some of the background for those shadows. Um, so I want every stroke to count 
where I have some dry brush in there. Um, some interesting edges in the mop brush will help you with that. Squirrel hair is needed for those interesting edges. And I'm just pulling that around and making each petal distinct, but still integrated enough into the rest of the rose. Because they are very separate. Um, okay, so this is quinacridone red with a touch of cobalt violet to give it that pastel -y look. And I'm going to put some quinacridone rust in there, and depending, it's going to have more cobalt violet. Just about everything. I'm being very careful at the first step, and then I can let everything flow together. Now that will dry a little too bright a pink without the touch of cobalt violet but you need to be pretty delicate. Nickel Azo Yellow. I don't want anything quite as bright as the Azo Yellow. I want a dull, warm glow where the sun is just kind of hitting the inside of the rose. Now remember, even if there's that shadowed area will blur into the sepals and the petal on the top will actually be distinct, the white petal, but I can blur it later. I don't have to, with well-sized paper, any of the actual artist's papers, you don't have to do everything in the first layer. You can paint it distinctly and then blur it a little afterwards. Uh, that's a little harder to do with one of the student grade, like one of the Canson papers or something like that. It just turns to kind of mush. Now continue to work your brush strokes with the shape of what you're painting. Some dry brush here really makes a difference. It makes that kind of sparkle and that interesting texture of the rose. I'll see how it really doesn't take much. It's mostly in the background. I can tell that the background's a little unbalanced, so I'm going to need to tweak it a bit. I'm using the same small, a limited palette, not to try to do some contest, but because it's good to use the same colors all around the painting because it integrates the painting. Now that touch of warm there where the sunlight hits it again. And here I went with the brighter because the petal's lighter. It's going to have the sunlight hit it a little differently than down in the shadow areas where it's going through other petals to hit. So pay attention to what you're painting. Especially when it's pale colors glowing because that you have to get right in just a couple strokes. You can't you don't have too many goes at that. You have three washes tops and that's it. The darks you want to take multiple washes. But the pale glowing colors you hit it and you get out of there. See, I'm hesitating. I'm taking my time painting because there is not a rush. I want to get every stroke right. The entire painting took about two hours, but as I said, I have done two of these. This is the second one. The first one didn't work because I used that gouache on the, the stamens and that didn't work. And 
So it isn't really the time it takes for one painting because one watercolor shouldn't take more than two or three hours at the very most. But you could paint for a week leading up to that of things that didn't quite work or sketches to practice just that stroke or that glow or that shadow. And that's what watercolor is all about. It's about learning something so well, knowing your subject so well that you can do it in just a few strokes. It doesn't take you too much to do it. But you don't want to simplify more than what's necessary either. The whole story. Lots more of the quinacridone rest for that warm shadow. Now this is kind of tricky because in the photo uh, reference that you could see, it's, it's quite bright, but I want to tone it down just a bit, but still have a contrast with that dark shadowed petal right above it. The stamens were the trickiest part of this entire painting. Um, it just, they're pale yellow, and if you do them too light, they stand out too much. But if you don't do, and if you don't do them too dark, they just don't look right. And you want the shadows behind them. So very delicate touch, and I highly recommend at least drawing in charcoal practicing a bit. So you can tell I rebalanced the background so it now it flows better. Paintings develop as you paint them. So take the time to put it up on a wall and stare at it for a few minutes. When it's dry, of course, not when the paint's going to go everywhere. It's just a few minutes staring at a painting um, makes all the difference in the world. I usually walk around my garden or do something to get the blood moving and then stare at the painting when my brain's really working again. And I can come up with all these little ideas to make it just a bit better. Now I'm ready for the delicate work. So I switch brushes and I want that little bit of pink peeking out between, from the far bud, peeking out between that stamen of the, there, sepal there. And this is a pretty deep shadow here. I mean, it really is almost green, but I want to make it a bit warmer because I warmed up the background anyways a little bit. So take your time. This is a 16 by 20 painting, by the way. 16 by 21 and a half. And then the warm glow inside that. So the roses are starting to look good. I'm really happy with them at this stage. They need touches, a little bit more shadows, a little bit more contrast in some places, a little bit less in other places. But those stamens, they're still not there. I'm telling you, that's the tricky because you don't, you want them sharp and crisp because they're sharp and crisp, but if they're too sharp and crisp, you want to, you know, they just look too stark. So practice that and charcoal or something that blurs at least so you can figure out where you want to blur them and you want to keep them sharp and crisp. Because this is all what you're going to paint of this, not me. This is just an idea and I want you to run with it brush in hand.
that's the wonderful thing about art is everyone is going to do things a little bit differently. There are things like balance and cools and warms and how you get the paint down there that are universal. But how you interpret all those things, that's art. A little bit more shots of my garden. It's just looking great this year. I'm really pleased with it. Nicotania. Nicotania is best at night because it's pollinated by moths. And it smells like heaven. But these roses smell like heaven. These are just a classic rose scent. Just what you think of. Not too heavy. Very classic. I'm using the wonderful combination of azo yellow and some cobalt violet here. And just a bit of reflection underneath where those petals are turning. Some more shadow in there because it feels light, but it really isn't. It's more blued. I'm going to pull some of the background color into the, the this petal right here because I don't, it's distracting a little bit much. I want to blur it. Some quinacridone rust here. So I'm painting them quite stark for the first round and then I can go back and blur them. very selectively. I painted a little bit more pink there than is actually there because, well, there could be a reflection and I wanted some warm at the center so that the yellow didn't contrast quite as much with the cool violets. A bit more of a reflection here. And that integrates it just enough. And while this is quite white, there are very slight hints of pink, so I'm I'm pumping those up a little bit. Just a few finishing touches. And that warm glow from inside. And here's the finished painting. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I've really enjoyed doing this video and I hope it inspires you to go paint in your own garden. For more information, please visit my website at paintingwatercolor.com. I have reference photos and lists of everything you need to paint this. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Happy painting.